LS principles of the firm also banned? Senator, my understanding is we're blocking them from doing business on the platform, but I do not believe that we're blocking people's personal accounts. Okay. Um, can any customer amend your terms of service, or is the terms of service a take-it-or-leave-it proposition for the average customer? Senator, I think the terms of service are what they are, but the service is really defined by people because you get to choose what information you share, and the whole service is about which friends you connect to, which people yeah, you choose to connect to. My question would relate to Senator Graham held up that big fat document. It's easy to put a lot of things buried in a document that then later turn out to be of consequence. And all I wanted to establish with you is that that document that Senator Graham held up, that is not a negotiable thing with individual uh, customers. That is a take it or leave it proposition for your customers to sign up to or not use the service. Senator, that's right on the terms of service, yeah. although we offer a lot of controls so people can configure the experience how they want. So um, last question on a different subject having to do with the authorization process that you are undertaking for entities that are putting up political content or so-called issue ad content. Um, you've said that they all have to go through an authorization process before they do it. You said here, we will be verifying the identity. How do you look behind a shell corporation and find who's really behind it through your authorization process? Well, step back. Do you need to look behind shell corporations in order to find out who is really behind the content that's being posted? And if you may need to look behind a shell corporation, how will you go about doing that? How will you get back to the true, what lawyers would call, beneficial owner of the site that is putting out the uh, political material? Senator, are you referring to the verification of political and issue ads? Yes. And before that, political ads, yes. Yes. So what we're going to do is require a valid government identity, and we're going to verify uh, the location. So we're going to do that, so that way someone sitting in Russia, for example, um, couldn't say that they're in America and therefore able to run an election ad. But if they were running through a corporation domiciled in Delaware, you wouldn't know that they were actually a Russian owner. Senator, that's, that's correct. Okay, thank you. My time has expired, and I appreciate the courtesy of the chair for the extra seconds. Thank you, Mr. Zuckerberg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Zuckerberg, I wanted to follow up on a statement that you made shortly before the break just a few minutes ago. Uh, you said that there are some categories of speech, some types of content that Facebook would never want to have any part of and it takes active steps uh, to avoid disseminating, including hate speech, nudity, uh, uh, racist speech. Uh, I, I assume you also meant uh, terrorist acts, uh, threats of physical violence, things like that. Uh, beyond that, would you agree that Facebook ought not be putting its thumb on the scale with regard to the content of speech? assuming it fits out of one of those categories that, that's prohibited? Senator, yes. There are generally two categories of content that, that we're very worried about. One are things that could cause real-world harm. So terrorism certainly fits into that. Um, Self-harm fits into that. I would consider election interference to fit into that. And those are the types of things that we... I, I don't really consider there to be much discussion around whether those are good or bad sure. topics. Yeah, and, and, and I'm not disputing that. Uh, uh, what I'm asking is, once you get beyond those categories of things that are prohibited and should be, uh, is it Facebook's position that it should not be putting its thumb on the scale? It should not be favoring or disfavoring speech based on its content, based on the viewpoint of that speech? Senator, in general, that's our position. What we, one of the things that is really important, though, is that in order to create a service where everyone has a voice, uh, we also need to make sure that people aren't bullied or, um, or basically intimidated or the environment feels unsafe for them. Okay. So uh, when you say in general, that's, that's the, the exception that you're referring to. Uh, uh, the exception being that if someone feels bullied, even if it's not a terrorist act, uh, nudity, terrorist threats, racist speech, or something like that, 
uh, you might step in there. Beyond that, would you step in and put your thumb on the scale as far as the viewpoint uh, of the content being posted? Senator, no. I mean, in general, our, our goal is to allow people to have as much expression as possible. Okay. So subject to the exceptions we've discussed, uh, you would stay out of that. Let me ask you this. Isn't there a significant free market incentive that a social media company, including yours, has in order to safeguard the data of your users? Don't you have free market incentives in yeah, that respect? Senator, yes. Does, don't your interests align with, with those of us here who want to see data safeguarded? Absolutely. Do you have the technological means uh, uh, available at your disposal to make sure that that doesn't happen and to, to protect, uh, say, an app developer um, from transferring Facebook data to a third party? Senator, a lot of that we do, and some of that happens outside of our systems and will require new measures. So, for example, what we saw here was people chose to share information with an app developer. That worked according to how the system was designed. That information was then transferred out of our system to servers that this developer, Alexander Kogan, had. And then that person chose to then go sell the data uh, to Cambridge Analytica. That is going to require much more active intervention and auditing from us to prevent going forward. Because once it's out of our system, it is a lot harder for us to uh, have a full understanding of what's happening. From what you've said today and from previous statements made by you and, and other officials at your company, data is at the center of your business model. It's, it's how you make money. Your ability uh, to run your business effectively, given that you don't charge your users, uh, is based on monetizing data. And so the, the, the real issue, it seems to me, uh, really comes down to what you tell the public, what you tell users of Facebook about what you're going to do with the data, about how you're going to use it. Uh, can, you, can you give me a couple of examples, maybe two examples, of ways uh, in which data uh, is collected by Facebook uh, in a way that people are not aware of? Um, two examples of types of data that Facebook collects that might be surprising to, to Facebook users. Well, Senator, I would hope that what we do with data is not surprising to people. And has it been at times? Um, well, Senator, I think in, in this case, people certainly didn't expect this developer to sell the data to Cambridge Analytica. Um, in general, there, there are two types of data that, uh, that Facebook has. The vast majority, and then the first category, is content that people chose to share on the service themselves. So that's all the photos that you share, the posts that you make, what you think of as the Facebook service. Right? That's, everyone has control every single time that they go to share that. They could delete that data anytime they want. Full control, the majority of the data. The second category is around specific data that we collect in order to make the advertising experiences better and more relevant and work for businesses. And those often revolve around measuring, OK, if, you, if we showed you an ad and then you click through and you go somewhere else, we can measure uh, that you actually, uh, that, that, the, that the ad worked. That helps make the experience more relevant and better for, uh, for people who are getting more relevant ads and better for the businesses because they perform better. You also have control completely of that second type of data. You can turn off the ability for Facebook to collect that. Your ads will get worse, so a lot of people don't want to do that. Uh, but you have complete control over what you do there as well. Senator Schatz. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to follow up on the questions around the terms of service. Your terms of service are about 3,200 words with 30 links. One of the links is to your data policy, which is about 2,700 words with 22 links. And I think the point has been well made that people really have no earthly idea what they're signing up for. And I understand that at the present time, that's legally binding, but I'm wondering if you can explain to the billions of users in plain language, what are they signing up for? Senator, that's a, a good and important question here. In general, you, know, you, you sign up for the Facebook. You get the ability to share the information that you want with, with people. That's what the service is, right, is that uh, you can connect with the people that you want, and you can share whatever content uh, matters to you, whether that's photos or links or posts. 
Um, and you get control over who you share it with, and you can take it down if you want, and you don't need to put anything up in the first place if you don't want. Um, what about the part that people are worried about, not the fun part? Well, what's that? The, uh, the part that people are worried about is that the data is going to be improperly used. So people are trying to figure out, uh, are your DMs informing the ads? Uh, are your browsing habits uh, being collected? Everybody kind of understands that when you click like on something, or if you say you like a certain movie or have a, a particular political proclivity, that I think that's fair game. Everybody understands that. What we don't understand exactly because both as a matter of practice and as a matter of not being able to decipher those terms of service and the privacy policy is what exactly are you doing with the data and do you draw a distinction between uh, data collected in the process of utilizing the platform and that which we clearly volunteer to the public to present ourselves to other Facebook users? Senator, I'm not sure I, I fully understand this. In general, you're, you're, you, people come to Facebook to share content with other people. We use that in order to also uh, inform how we rank services like newsfeed and ads to provide more relevant experiences. Let, let, me, tr let me try a couple of specific examples. If I'm, email, if I'm emailing, emailing within WhatsApp, does that ever inform your advertisers? No, we don't see any of the content in WhatsApp. It's fully encrypted. Right, but the, is there some algorithm that spits out some information to your ad platform? And then, let's say I'm emailing about Black Panther uh, within WhatsApp. Do I get a WhatsApp? Do I get a Black Panther uh, banner ad? Senator, we don't. Facebook systems do not see the content of messages being transferred over WhatsApp. Yeah, I know, but that's that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking about whether these systems talk to each other without a human being touching it. Senator, I think the answer to your specific question is if you message someone about Black Panther and WhatsApp, it would not inform uh, any ads. Okay. Uh, I want to follow up on Senator Nelson's original question, which is the question of ownership of the data. And I understand as a sort of matter of principle, you're saying, you know, we want our customers to have more rather than less control over the data. But I can't imagine that it's true as a legal matter that I actually own my Facebook data because you're the one monetizing it. Um, do you want to modify that to sort of express that as a statement of principle, a sort of aspirational uh, goal? But it doesn't seem to me that uh, we own our own data, otherwise we'd be getting a cut. Well, Senator, you own it in the sense that you choose to put it there. You could take it down any time, and you completely control the terms under which it's used. When you put it on Facebook, you are granting us a license to be able to show it to other people. I mean, that's necessary in order for the service to operate. Right, but the, so, the, the, so your definition of ownership is I sign up, um, I voluntarily, and I may delete my account if I wish, but that's basically it. Uh, well, Senator, I, I think that the control is much more granular than that. You can choose uh, each photo that you want to put up or each message, um, and you can delete those. And you don't need to delete your whole account. You have specific control. You can share different posts with different in the, people? In the time I have left, I want to I propose something to you and take it for the record. Uh, I read an interesting article this week by Professor Jack Balkin at Yale uh, that proposes a concept of an information fiduciary. People think of fiduciaries as responsible primarily in the uh, economic sense, but this is really about a trust relationship, like doctors and lawyers, tech companies uh, should hold in trust our personal data. Are you open to the idea of a uh, information fiduciary enshrined in statute? Senator, I think it's certainly an interesting idea, and Jack is very thoughtful in this space, so I, I do think it deserves consideration. Thank you. <clears throat> Ralph Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Zuckerberg, for being here today. I appreciate your testimony. Uh, the full scope of a Facebook user's activity can print um, very personal picture, I think. And additionally, you have those two billion uh, users that are out there every month, and so we all know that's larger than the population of most countries. So how many data categories do you store? Does Facebook store on the categories that you collect? Senator, can you clarify what you mean by data well, there's, categories? Well, there's some past reports that have been out there that indicate that it that Facebook collects about 96 
data categories for those 2 billion active users. That's 192 billion data points that are being generated, I think, at any time uh, from consumers globally. So how many do you, does Facebook billion data points that are being generated, I think, at any time uh, from consumers globally. So how many Facebook store 92 categories? How many do you store? You are collecting. Senator, the, the way I think about this is there are two broad categories. I, I, this probably doesn't line up with whatever the, the specific reporting is, and I can make sure that we follow up with the person is and control over. They get to into the server down uh, that are uh, making the ads relevant. Control over both. Turn off the data. You, you can choose content or control exactly who sees it or take down the content in the. Does store any. How much do you store of that? All of it? All of it? Everything we click that in storage? Data about what people share on the server and required better to show you. X history, user content, um, device. Senator, some of that, with people's permission, we do store. Disclose any. Yes, it, it, Senator, in order to, to share that information with Facebook, I, I believe that you just said. Right. And the privacy setting, understanding that they limit the sharing of that data with their Facebook, is that correct? Yes. Control who gets to see their content. And does that also use it? Senator, yes, there, uh, there are controls that uh, determine what. For example, people have a control about face recognition. If people don't want us to uh, be able to help identify when they're in photos that their friends upload, um, then they can turn that off. We won't store plate for them. And, and some action taken by the in 2011. And you wrote a Facebook post at the time um, it, on a public page on the to seem scary to people. As long as they could make their page private, they felt safe sharing with their friends online. Control was And you just controlled or Hatch um, ask you a question and you respond complete control. So you and your company have used that repeatedly, and I believe you use it to your users. Is that correct? Do you have control, complete control information? Well, that's how the service works. Is I mean, the Facebook is, and all of our services, Instagram. So is this uh, say Users actually safe is Facebook is Facebook being safe? Senator, safe. Family use it, love and care about use it all the time. These controls are not just to make people feel safe. It's actually what people want in the product. Is that when you? I mean, just think about how you use this yourself. You don't want to sh take a photo. You're not going to always send that to the same people. Sometimes you're going to send it to one person. Sometimes you might send it to a group. I bet you want to publicly so you can communicate with your constituents. There are all these people that someone might want to connect with. Controls are very important in practice for the operation of the service, not to build trust, although I think that they, providing people with control also does, but actually in order to make it so that people can controls with the service. Senator Kuhn. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Zuckerberg. For I think the whole in this hearing is because of a tension between two basic principles you've laid out. Now, first, you've said that users you control data that you on Facebook. You've said some very positive, optimistic things about privacy and data ownership. 
reality. Profit entity that $40 billion in ad revenue last year by targeting ads. In fact, Facebook claims that advertising makes it easy to find the right people, capture their attention, and get results. And you recognize that an ad-supported service is, as you said earlier today, best aligned with your mission and values. But the reality is there's a lot of examples where ad targeting has led to results that I think we would all uh, disagree with or dislike or would concern us. Uh, you've already admitted that Facebook's own ad tools allowed Russians to target users, voters, based on racist or anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant views, and that that may have played a significant role in an election here in the United States. Just today, Time Magazine posted a story saying that wildlife traffickers are continuing to use Facebook tools to advertise illegal sales of protected animal parts. And I am left questioning whether your ad targeting tools would allow other concerning practices like diet pill manufacturers targeting teenagers who are struggling with their weight or allowing a liquor distributor to target alcoholics or a gambling organization to target those with gambling problems. Um, I'll give you one concrete example I'm sure you're familiar with. ProPublica back in 2016 um, highlighted that Facebook lets advertisers exclude users by race in real estate advertising. Um, there was a way that you could say that this particular ad, I only want to be seen by white folks, not by people of color. And that clearly violates fair housing laws and our basic sense of fairness in the United States. And you uh, promptly announced that uh, that was a bad idea, you were going to change the tools, and that you would build a new system to spot and reject discriminatory ads that violate our commitment to fair housing. And yet a year later, a follow-up story by ProPublica said that those changes hadn't fully been made, and it was still possible to target uh,